how can I get in? And part of that is how can I make myself stand out? Is it better for me to do this or this? That is Dr. Kristen Goodell, the Associate Dean of Admissions at Boston University, one of the most competitive schools in the nation. She and many other ad comms today from WashU St. Louis, Florida Atlantic, and Washington State will tell us the four key mistakes that lead to 30,000 pre-meds every single year getting rejected everywhere. The first one, the misunderstanding of what holistic admissions actually means is the most important. And I'll walk you through WashU's EAM framework, experiences, attributes, and metrics to explain what holistic admissions actually means. If you're new here, I'm Mike. I'm an anesthesiology resident in New York City, and I'm the co-founder of Pre-Med Catalyst. I graduated from UCLA and trained at UCLA Medical School. And over the last seven years, I've helped hundreds of pre-meds get into their dream medical schools. But if you want to know exactly what it takes to get into medical school, I have eight full medical school applications for you to check out. Always available and always free in our application database, these applications got into schools like UCLA, UC San Francisco, and UC San Diego. And it features everything, the personal statement, the GPA, the MCAT, and the extracurricular activities, including my own application that got me into UCLA Medical School with no gap year. The application database is one click away in our link in bio, and I'll see you there. Mistake number one, holistic admissions is not what you think it is. Holistic admissions does not mean you will get into medical school with a 496 MCAT and a 2.15 GPA. Holistic admissions means that there are more than just your GPA and MCATs that will be taken into consideration. It does not mean, however, that your GPA and MCAT scores are not crucial to the admissions process. Here is Dr. Judy Ann Calloway, Dean of Admissions for the Long School of Medicine, explaining this very same concept. So there is a myth out there if you have a low MCAT score, it's going to be okay because your personal attributes are fantastic and your experiences are rich. Um, and that's a little bit of a myth. It's a three-legged stool. And if one of those legs is, a, is skinny and weak and it's a toothpick, and the other two legs of the stool are strong, that stool still is not gonna stand up. So we want to see some academic strength some rigor in the coursework. So holistic admissions emphasizes that every single lever should meet some threshold of strength. You can't have a red flag GPA. You can't have a red flag MCAT. You can't have a red flag lack of clinical experiences, lack of shadowing, lack of research experiences, especially if you're applying to top 25 medical schools. You cannot have a red flag level of strength for your letters of recommendation. Every lever must meet some standard of quality. Here's Dr. Kellaway again, and Dr. Ratz, the Associate Dean of Admissions at Wash U St. Louis. And notice how specifically Dr. Ratz defines holistic admissions. We follow the holistic review process of the AAMC, where we wanna give balanced consideration to the EA, what we call EAM, experiences, attributes and metrics. Okay. So, well, there is no formula for washing. Yeah. Your three-legged stool, your experiences, attributes, and metrics must be well-balanced and strong all across the board. Mistake number two, not knowing the phases of admission. Pre-meds, you must first have a foot in the door before you have a seat at the table. Every single year, medical schools get thousands of applications, far too many for them to read all in their entirety. So the first phase is when schools are looking to screen you out. Any red flag, anywhere in your application or any glaring weakness will get you a fast track to the rejection pile. And many medical schools are very clear about their criteria. Here's Florida Atlantic's admissions director describing their screen out process. I screen all the applications that come in that have a minimum 497 MCAT. Uh, we also want applicants to have at least 3.3 GPA. So this is all the touch points I'm doing on the initial applications to get the bulk of 4,000 people narrow down to a more manageable number that then will be reviewed by faculty of the College of Medicine. To be very clear, if you do not have the basic skeleton of a competitive application, you will not make it to the second phase where medical schools take a thorough deep dive to actually look to screen you in. In fact, many thousands of pre-meds every single year apply willy-nilly 
and a human never actually reads their application. After schools have whittled down the number of applications, they are transitioning to a rule in phase where they're trying to get to know the applicants in their entirety and offer an interview to people who they believe are their best fits. And here's the Washington State Admissions Director describing their ruling process. The admissions committee doesn't see your GPA, um, and we don't make decisions based on your GPA. Once your GPA and MCAT thresholds are met, you're in the system, and now we are doing something called holistic review, and we're reviewing you for other attributes. Notice that when you get to this stage, Washington State doesn't even know what your GPA and MCATs are any longer. You've passed phase one where they're assessing for your academic ability. And after that, it's all looking at whether you're the type of person that would fit on their campus. As a simple rule out or foot in the door checklist, I recommend the following. Number one, don't apply if your GPA and MCAT is less than the 10th percentile of your dream medical school. Don't apply if you have less than 20 hours of shadowing, 50 hours of community service, 50 hours of clinical experience, and some sort of research experience, especially as you're trying to apply to more competitive research heavy schools. And number three, not applying if you feel like your letters of recommendations are mediocre to lukewarm. Every year, over 50,000 pre-meds apply to medical school and over 60% don't get into a single one. If this video hasn't been completely trashed thus far, I highly I highly encourage you to take a look at the free resources we have in our description box below. Click the link in the description box to find out more. And for now, let's go back to the video. Mistake number three, you can't hack your way into a medical school acceptance. I've heard it all, applying to just one medical school to start verifying your application and then adding a bunch of schools later to the school list. Choosing a unique non-science major like journalism and society just so that you stand out. Strengthening a mediocre letter of recommendation by having some famous big wig or professor sign the letter. All these secret tricks of the trade or hacks miss the main point. And here's Monica again from Florida Atlantic to tell you exactly the problem. If you're not ready as an applicant, it's best maybe to not apply at all. You don't get into medical school on accident. There's no shortcut or secret backdoor or any special sauce that automatically gets you recognized. If your application is not ready, no matter what hack you find on Reddit or Student Doctor Network, it will still not be ready. To be clear, if you feel like you are not ready, it is best not to apply at all. Take the time to patch up your weaknesses and double down on your strengths instead. The first time that you apply is the highest chance you will have to getting in. Because every subsequent application cycle, you have to prove to medical schools what's different about your application this time around, and is it significant enough to overrule the 30 plus rejections you got last cycle and the cycle before that. That is an extremely high burden of proof. And if you feel lost on your pre-med journey, you are not alone. Pre-med Catalyst has worked with hundreds, if not thousands of pre-med students in exactly your same position. Our mentorship program is our fundamental foundation and pioneering product. It helps you take control of your journey, build your own cohesive narrative, and most importantly, you'll have a personal support system, a village of mentors to help you make the right decisions for your pre-med journey. If this video has been helpful, you may also find our mentorship program even more helpful. But for now, back to mistake number four, following the pre-med checklist. The pre-med checklist is so appealing. It is simple, it's straightforward, it feels like it has the exact right answers. The checklist looks something like become a scribe, EMT, or MA for about 2,000 hours, join a research lab and work your way up to an independent research project, get an A in biology or chemistry, and go ahead and become a tutor of a bio or chem lab. Commit to some sort of community service, whether it's a food drive, a toy drive, or a homeless kitchen, and to make sure to wrap it all up on your personal statement by writing that you want to become a doctor because you like people and you like science. We bring back Dr. Goodell now to share exactly how she feels about the pre-med checklist. And the most important thing is that people, is that you do what you are excited about, not what you think is gonna look good. Um, there's a whole set of applications that where people have met all of the criteria and when we read those applications, we say, what we often write in our notes is, this application has kind of a checkbox feel, which means like, oh, they told me I have to do some community service. Okay, 
um, all right, let me do this. I, I, let me do this this year. Yeah. You know, yeah. this organization or whatever. So, so that doesn't play all that well. Um, Paradoxically, the only guarantee if you follow the pre-med checklist is that you will be just like every other pre-med. Generic, average, mediocre. And I feel terrible that this is the situation most pre-meds in. It's not your fault. I, just like every other pre-med, guess what medical schools want to see because admissions is a high stakes game and we all want to become doctors. And so the safest way for our 18 or 19 year old pre-med self is to follow this formula that looks good for medical schools. And here's Dr. Goodell on avoiding the checklist and prioritizing what you're actually passionate about. I think what is the most important is that you do the thing that is really exciting to you because most likely there's gonna be some school that thinks that is amazing. And you know what I mean? So like, good, then you apply and go to one of those schools that thinks what you did is totally amazing. What I took away from Dr. Goodell is that instead of following exact extracurricular activities, follow principles. Andy got into Harvard Medical School because he published his stem cell research in some of the biggest journals. I was not Andy. And so when I tried to join that same exact lab, I didn't have the same passion to withstand all the long hours and all the roadblocks to the experiments. I ended up getting into UCLA not because of stem cell research, but because of my work with Vietnamese and Hispanic immigrants in the community. And you will not likely get into medical school because of Vietnamese or Hispanic immigrants or because of stem cell research like Andy. Follow the principle here, which is that one should build their entire application around something or some theme that they really care about. Those are the four core mistakes that adcoms continue to say are the reasons pre-meds get rejected every single year. And if you liked this video, you'll love this video here, where we hear from more adcoms from some of the most competitive schools in the nation, including Yale, Columbia, and Case Western. All of them will tell you that the secret to getting in is to do what you love. But what does that even mean? In this video, I'll translate that to you into four exact steps that you can follow today to convert your passion into real medical school acceptances. We'll talk about the passion flywheel, where passion leads to time, leads to skill, leads to impact, which eventually loops around and increases passion all over again. I'll see you in that video there.